everybody. I'm doing a 60 minute session for a client. I'm gonna read the goals here and get started. Okay, I need clarity. Best place to focus my attention. Ways to increase healing of self. My family have been going through some heavy trauma seven months ago, and I'm not really knowing what what to turn to. Have always gone internally to source. Now I'm in a very strange and uncomfortable transformational process. Wow. Okay. Clarity. And the best place to focus your attention. Ways to increase healing of self. And the trauma your family has been going through seven months ago and not really knowing um, what to turn to. And you're in a very strange and uncomfortable transformational process right now. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna relax, get tuned in. Thank you so much for opening up to us and being willing to share, share this experience openly on YouTube. Okay. All right. It's hard to know how to begin to speak about the experience and maybe there is something about um, expressing oneself lodged in the throat but I feel like there's something here that needs to be broken down and it's all quite silent right now. <sighs> Almost like, um, let's say you always used to dance. But then you became a teenager and you started to have some like self-realizing moments and you just decided you're not going to dance because you don't want to be stupid or people to make fun of you or whatever. You could do it when you were younger. Now you're a teenager. Now you're not going to dance anymore. And so you've learned how to sit still. Well, the spirit inside you is still dancing, right? Um, so this is kind of what it reminds me of. Um, like, we need to get you dancing again. We need to break down whatever the silent wall is. It's like uh, the need to be still when you really need to be dancing. Um, so we need to break down the silent wall, okay? So, so what's coming to me right now? It's, it's easier to be still. It's easier to not say something and create the ripple in the pond and you don't know if there's going to be a ripple back that's going to create more stress. Like sometimes it's easier to be silent and still. But the more silent and still, um, the more these structures build and they become harder to break down um, because time passes, you know? And we become kind of uh, accustomed to a safety or a security. This is the best way I can define what this silent energy is <laughs> that I have to break down. That's the first thing. Um, I want it, it reminds me of uh, wood, not like rock or brick or um, even like an energy wall. It reminds me of wood and when I put my hand into it, it's like I'm putting my hand into wood and um, it's grainy like I could um, get a splinter from this, um, but I never do. And I keep putting my hand to see, well, how deep is this wall? And then I keep putting my hand through. It's like, oh my God, there's still a wall. There's still a wall. There's still a wall. Um, am I inside the wall or am I on the outside looking at the wall and wanting to see what is on the inside of it? Both are true. Both is you are inside a very thick wall. And I don't even know how thick it is because I haven't found the other side of it yet. This is the silent energy we need to break down. Also, you're on the outside of the wall looking in and wondering how um, deep this, this wall goes that needs to be broken down, okay? So both are true. 
You're on the inside and the outside at the same time. How is it that you are on the inside and the outside of the wall at the exact same time? So you're both imprisoned um, and set free. <laughs> Why are we still focusing on this wall? <laughs> because some aspect of you says I'm stuck inside and another aspect of you is saying we need to break this down. I can't find the end of this wall. <laughs> and so that's the next thing. I feel like you are on the cusp of what could be, um, this could be really quick and easy, or this could be really long and drawn out, okay? Um, this process that you're in, as you, as you had put it, uh, um, I love how you put it, because I, I, I feel like a lot of us could say we've been in this. Um, I'm in a very strange and uncomfortable transformational process. And I will say that this could be very quick and easy to finalize the transformation, or it could take time. <clears throat> I'm just going to say that right now, okay? We're both inside of it, and we're also outside. <laughs> we are both imprisoned, and we are also set free, still looking at this problem when we could just move on. Um, so, <laughs> which is setting these, the, the part of you that is imprisoned by it, it's like, here I am, I'm on the outside, I'm free. I'm just going to turn around and I'm just going to move on from this. And I'm going to bring any parts of me that are stuck in this wall, in this block, <laughs> I'm just going to bring them with me because we're going to have to just let all this stuff go. So if there is this traumatizing family event, um, perhaps some of it is not, it's like you're still looking at it from the ground level, let's say. Let's just say, okay? Um, and... And it's almost like you need to detach from it or let it go. And by doing so, you'll be able to rise above, move through life and new experiences. That doesn't mean that your heart doesn't care or it's almost like you could let this go, um, grow a little bit. And as you grow, then you can return to it with a new set of emotions, a new pair of eyes and feel completely differently about it. Um, that's another um, idea that's coming to me, okay? Hmm. All right, the scene is a little bit different now. Um, the you on the outside is a male persona, and he's wearing blue. <laughs> and he's trying to get you out, um, and you're wearing red, and you're a female persona um, from the inside. And this block is actually in a circle, circular shape. And now I'm able to see the outside, um, the outer wall and the inner wall of this, what is a massive, just a, like a coin of wood that's just hollow in a little section in the center where the female you is standing. And then there's a male persona on the outside. And this is this, we ha what do we do here? So I'm looking at this. The male persona is starting to look like a, a general in, in the army um, of like a civil war, okay? Like old school, wearing blue. And I mean, I see old types of guns where you have to put um, like a rod inside and there's the round bullets. And he has a black mustache. He seems to be removed in a way from what this wall symbolizes and what you symbolize in the inside of it. Because I'm starting to notice that his attention isn't on the wall, it's on his role, his purpose. If he is a leader of men or a leader of people through a civil war, um, then he has to um, focus on his role. Focus on his purpose, his calling. He can't focus on this wall. He can't focus on that. This is where the energy gets very stagnant and it's very undecided and it's very um, 
kind of uh, wishy-washy. Because now there's really no point to the wall, but the wall still remains. And then the part of you in the center, I cannot reach. And so when I see the male persona, it's just kind of, um, it's almost like his mind is forgetting about the wall and then he's kind of in, in his own world now. I still see him, but he has no interaction with this anymore. And it almost is inspiring the wall to grow um, wider. And so I see this now is getting, it's almost like, let's say we cut down a tree and then you have a tree stump, but then there's like an open spot in the center of it, okay? But let's make the tree stump um, wider and wider and wider and wider and wider, and you're still in the center here. Um, not able to get out of this, not able to see the end of it because you don't know how far this goes. And then if only when you're looking from above can you see how truly far this goes. Like you can see the outer wall and the inner wall. You can see what this looks like. But if you're on the ground, you can't really tell. And then this external male persona is just doesn't isn't really involved anymore is just kind of doing his own thing it doesn't really make sense for him to be involved i understand that because he he has another uh, another calling so he can't just figure this out with his time he's running he's a leader in a civil war you know what i mean like um it's like uh It's like your life purpose is each and every day in the Civil War, but for some reason you need to step away from that and go look at this tree stump for a while. It just doesn't make sense, you know? So I understand that. He's still lingering around, though. Hmm. I'm going to actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put him in a box for right now. And I'm going to remove him from the scene. Because he is a distraction in a way. I will say his persona has changed. He also reminds me of, a, in the old Disney movie Cinderella. Um, it's the one, there is like a, this, ma this man, uh, male character. And he, he kind of is... Um, he works for the king, I guess. But he's the one that goes around with the glass slipper to try to have the many women try it on. Um, and he has kind of like a monocle. He has a black mustache. He's very um, properly dressed and um, takes his role seriously. Um, there's a gentleness to him, but he is here to follow through with his role, which is trying to find the woman who fits this glass slipper. So again, he's taking on a, yet another persona, kind of a similar um, place. Like he's a, a like higher a higher vantage point. He's not a servant, or he's not working in the markets. Like he's in the palace, you know. So or he's a leader in the civil war. So he's like a upper deck. Um, He's got more accessibility, more um, power, I guess you could say. Um, he takes his role seriously, but he has a gentle heart. Um, I feel that about him. So, I'm, But I am going to put this persona in a box, and we're just going to move it off to the side, because I feel like it's distracting. I feel like it's not getting to the root of what we really need to be doing here. If this persona on the in the center, the red version of you, needs to get out, how come I can't hear that version? How come I can't get to that version? How come you're so closed off? The most important thing, in my opinion, is to figure out this wall and get you out of here. But again, should we be looking at the block? Should we be looking at what the problem is? Or should we just be walking away from it? Should we be focusing on our role, our position? Um, and do that, circulate through that for a time, and then come back. Again, it's, it's showing me this from yet another angle. But yet I am, I remain because I feel vibrationally that is what I am to do right now. I'm going to walk through the wall and I'm just going to go straight into the center to you. 
I'm not allowed. Okay, so I can't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to project my consciousness to you in the center of this, um, of this very wide um, wooden wall. It goes around in a circle. You really don't want to let anybody in, that's for sure. I mean, if I can't even get in there, you're not letting your guides in, you're not letting your angels in, you're not letting source in. You were mentioning here about um, usually work with source. I want to I wanna just recap on this one here. Um, I've always gone internally to source. Okay. Now I'm in a very strange and uncomfortable transformational place, um, transformational process. Um, so... This might, wall might be your own creation, and because of it, um, there's, not, there's not accessibility to you. It's not easy to access you. So um, I'm going to project my consciousness to you to, um, to reach you, because I can't, in this energy world, as an energy being, I can walk through any energy wall um, unless you locked me out or you locked others out. Um, you get the vibrational choice to do that, okay? But I can still project my consciousness in. I just can't be... I have to be a, the lightest version of myself to reach you. Okay? You really are hiding, 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 hiding. You don't want to be looked at. You don't want to be seen. Um... So you're inside of some distorted glass, and I, I, and that's I say that because the glass is not flat and smooth and clear. It's all kind of like warped and um, kind of bubbles in places in weird ways, and then it, it just it's like not easy to see through this glass. And I see you wearing a, a red outfit, and you're like a little woman. You're like a little old lady in this. <laughs> See, and you have um, white hair is pulled back in an adorable little bun. Like I'm, I'm, I'm seeing you even though you're like distorted. Okay, and it seems like you're cooking and you're singing to yourself. Okay, it seems like you're stirring a soup, and you're talking to yourself in the tiny little space in the kitchen. Oh, this is also related to your heart chakra. It's also related to your crown chakra and third eye. You really, like, you just heard me say that, and now you're like, <gasps> and now you don't talk out loud to yourself, you just talk inside, like, very quietly. <laughs> That's you talking to yourself inside yourself really quietly. Man, oh man! I like the challenge here, getting to you. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Emotional, emotional, emotional. Like I'm, I'm touching the glass and I'm saying, it's okay, it's okay, <laughs> it's okay, <laughs> it's okay. Just touching the glass, it's okay. Oh, oh, okay. I touch the glass, it's not okay. Definitely not okay. Because the glass is turning to something kind of not nice looking. It's like black, slimy, gross worms. And there's a lot more pain inside this um, hard to see through glass. Um, even still, you were showing me what you wanted me to see in a way, but not what is really there. This is really hard because I feel it inside my heart like, oh my god like a beautiful apple that just got a worm and it like started to just the perfect apple come on you know it needs to stay that way <laughs> but then worms get into perfect apples and does that mean that it's no good now it just feels like you have this beautiful heart and there's like it's like one of those scenarios like you bite into the apple and you didn't notice there was a hole in it and like oh gross there's definitely, this has been eaten by a worm or something. I'm so disturbed right now, you know? Um, so it's got that yucky feeling and it's just a small like tunnel in your heart and it's like a worm got in there. There's all these, this, this glass is dissolving. It's just all these black worms just falling to the ground and they kind of start to look like black snakes, okay? 
Hmm, see, we're starting to get into the nitty gritty here. Yeah. There's a new complexity to this scene. <sighs> the new complexity is what is actually real. Is it really black worms turning into black snakes? Is it really um, bad? Or is it not bad? Am I on the outside looking in or am I on the inside? Am I imprisoned or am I set free? Is it really that bad or is it not? Um, where is the illusion and where is the reality? Um, because the truth is vibrationally, Yes, this feels vibrationally vulnerable, okay? Super vulnerable. And it feels yucky and it feels gross and it feels real. Um, but when I continue to look at it, it echoes back to me that it's not as real as it appears. So which path do I take? The path that is is the painful illusion or the path that is the enlightened reality the which path i'm going to ask you inside yourself which path you want me to look at because it because both are in their own right real okay both are real and true um and so the path you you choose is actually going to help me free you Okay, and it both are correct. So it just it doesn't matter which one, but let's take one of them. And that is the path that is going to free you from all this. So which one? And I show you, you want me to go in with the black worms, the black snakes, or do you want me to go with the thing that is hard to see that is really there? Like um, the child that dances becomes the teenager that sits still, but is still dancing on the inside. So truly then you're still dancing on the inside. So is it true that you have stopped dancing? You could say yes, but that's actually the illusion because the truth is you're still dancing on the inside. I understand why this is a complex transformational process because we're trying to weigh where's the truth and where's the illusion. So that's why it doesn't matter. Um, it, it, there's no right or wrong answer to the question. We just need to choose a path and then we're going to go on that path. Okay. Yeah, you, I mean, you literally have a balanced conflict. And it's, it's not an easy one because we're working with a complex riddle of perspective. <laughs> and it's, um, I will say there's challenge to your session because the perspective itself is a challenging one, okay? I say just... Just do it, okay? It's kind of like, again, I keep getting images of, um, like, okay, I try to do weird things because um, I try to break down my ego and prove to myself that I'm strong enough and courageous enough to be that weird, okay? So um, a lot of people can't be that weird because it's just too weird, <laughs> you know? Um, that's why it takes strength and courage to be weird, to dance, to sing in public, um, to talk to oneself in public, you know, because it's weird and you don't do that. Like there's all these rules to the way that you should behave if you are a normal person. Um, and I'm always trying to break that down because um, we have to set ourselves free from this, okay? Um, it's appropriate for some people, maybe not others. I feel like it's appropriate for everybody, but... This is kind of like a light language, reminds me of light language because um, I struggle. It's like, just do it, Abby. Just freaking do it. Just freaking do it. I don't know, okay? 
I don't know, because it's kind of weird. Like, the light language is just kind of weird, you know? Get freaking over yourself. Just freaking do it, okay? It takes a lot of strength and a, and a lot of courage to put yourself out there in a way that makes you feel vulnerable and uncomfortable and feel outside the box, you know? But it's actually setting yourself free from yourself. It's breaking down the invisible wall. Um, you didn't even know you were imprisoned only because you're not going to set yourself free. Didn't realize that you needed to keep dancing. You needed to keep singing. You needed to keep expressing yourself. Um, don't close yourself up. Don't do not do that, okay? So um, again, um, in this scene when I'm asking you which path, uh, I'm kind of... I feel like you need to get something out of you and maybe it's going to sound like like barking dogs and mooing cows at the same time. So we could call that a light language. It'd be like, you know, like something weird. Like sometimes we just got to break it down and get the sound, the weird, stupid, weird sound out. But it, for whatever reason, it does make us feel better. I've challenged myself in my own secret world. And I, I'm just like, okay, what's it like? Abby, you, you're you're holding yourself back. You're doing so. What does it sound like? It's like, I can't get this sound. I don't know what it sounds like. Okay, start oinking like a pig. Start mooing like a cow. Now get the sound out. What's the sound sound like? And then I just start making whatever I can make to create the sound in my head. Because I have like screeching and weird freaking noises. Hopefully my neighbors can't hear me, right? <laughs> Probably can. Um, but it helps, okay? Because this is, this is kind of a... I don't feel like you're stuck, um, but I feel like you could be stuck, um, mainly because of the riddle we're looking at. This could be super easy or this could take some time. Depends on how you're able to work through it, okay? Um, the more you push yourself to be outside the box is the closer you're going to be to your true self. And you need to start discovering your true self here. Um, and, it, and it seems to be a vibrational dancer, singer, speaker, like um, it could be creative. It could be, um, it doesn't have to be cut and dry and, and um, make any sense, you know. It could be different. It could be a different thing that you are, you know. So you got to be that, that whatever that is. You got to figure out what that is, you know. All right, so we're here. You can't tell me what path, and I feel like there's something lodged in your throat, and I'm just, like, showing you just oink like a pig or bark like a dog or quack like a duck um, because you need to make a sound that's weird that you would never make, um, and then it's going to start loosening that up. But you you just, it's like, again, you would rather me see you talking to yourself as a, a sweet old lady cooking soup. Like, there's something nice about that image. Um, there's something wholesome and adorable about that. Um, but really, it's like we have the snakes and the and the gross black worms and the heart that had the, the worm and the apple. Like, um, it, so what is real? What is the real? What is the real here? And what is the illusion here? And the only way we're going to get to the real is if you oink like a freaking pig, okay? And moo like cow. Because you have to get something out of yourself. And it's not going to sound like normal, okay? This is good. This is good. Uh, um, you aren't making noise, but you're thinking about it. And by thinking about it, it's activating your crown chakra, your third eye, and I'm feeling it in your heart. Just thinking about yourself oinking like a pig is already moving the energy. Is already doing it. You have, I, you have to just make a stinking decision, okay? The worms and the black snakes, or what is really there? Which one? I'm not, I need you to pick. You're avoiding, 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 avoiding. Can we just look at my throat chakra? Can we just look at my third eye? Can we just look at my crown? <laughs> you don't want to tell me. Like You're like, let's do something else, please. No. Which one? Which path? Just take a minute to think about the, the gross worms I touched. Just think about that for a minute. 
this other path, I have no idea what we're going to see or if we're even going to be able to see it because the reality is really hard to see right now. It's invisible. So which one, the, the illusion is really easy to see right now. Um, the reality is really hard to see right now, okay? And the reality is like the spirit that dances within yourself. So which one is it? I want you to just think about this. Don't even make a decision. Just think about the black worms. It doesn't matter which one you choose. We just need to choose one. There's no right or wrong. You kind of say the black worms and the snakes is kind of what's eating at your heart. And so that would be the path that is eating at your heart. Um, and then let's look then at this, the true reality. And so you're going to look at what is kind of the invisible, but there's light in it. Okay. And you kind of get t attacked by a lot of black birds that attack your third eye and your crown chakra. And I say, don't worry about them. Just keep looking at this other path. It's the a path you're avoiding, you say. What the the real what is really there that is hard to see where the light is is the path that you're avoiding. And it's obviously the path that these blackbirds don't want you to take. They want you to keep looking at um, the gross worms and the black snakes um, that have e eaten at your heart. But do we, is that the real path to healing or is it this invisible path with the light? You're tired of these black birds. Like they kind of try to pull your eyes out and they try to damage your third eye and your crown chakra and you're letting them. And perhaps in what the trauma that took place had you kind of fall out of a tree, you know? Where we used to work with Source and now I'm just not able to because I don't really, I'm going through a hard transformational process. Um, but really what we need to do is get you back at the highest perch of the tree where you get to see the bigger picture through the illumination of Source energy. So it's like, um, we got to find our way back to Source, okay? <laughs> we got to. And, and it's okay to leave Source. Because we got to fall out of the nest to have experiences. We are always with source. <laughs> but now you got to rely on yourself and your human instincts and the struggle of being human, right? Um, but really, you have source with you all along. So maybe we could do both. Be the bird that, the baby bird that fell out of the tree that now has to figure out how to survive, but still has source but still has the comfort of the nest within their heart, okay? So I'm going to merge the path. <laughs> so here we can do this. Here we can merge the path of the light, which is always within your heart, um, with the path of what, may, what it feels like was eating at your heart. The blackbirds disappear. So you are, have been attacking yourself. And what we're going to do is we're going to let the light from this path of the real, the real path that's hard to see, we're going to let that light transmute all these black worms and snakes, okay? Just transmute them like it transmuted those black birds. Illusion tries to override it. It tries to create stinky smells and tries to create distractions. It tries to create more harm, but it doesn't have the power to because we're merging with the light of source. And we're simplifying the whole path because it's always illuminated with light and love. And there's no confusion to be had on this path because the path is illuminated with light and love. And so what is it that you want to get out of life? Do you want to experience the worms? Or you could say, yeah, this has been harmful. This has hurt my heart. This has been hard for me. But I'm still on the path of light and love. And I want to live in that truth. I want to live in the true light that is within me and around me all the time. And I don't need this distraction because it's kind of holding you. It's like saying that... Um, 
let's how do I want to put that? I see a graveyard I see someone looking at a grave and there's a skeletal hand that comes to try to pull you underground into like the sadness of death okay um, but why can't you just visit the graveyard? Why does it have to be a gloomy day? Why can't it be a bright sunny day full of beautiful birds chirping and flowers growing everywhere? Um, why can't it be that scene? Why does it have to be the scary scene? Like the illusion is it's all terrible, but the truth is it's all sunshine, rainbows, and flowers, and you know this. So why create the invisible hand that is pulling you beneath this, the ground that isn't actually there? What is the part of you that wants to remain in the suffering side of this as though that is the truth? Because it isn't the truth. You can feel sad, but you don't have to let it... Um, I don't want to put this... Consume you, I guess? Define, like separate you from the light of the of the path of source that's always there anyway you know I, you can imagine it takes you back to the whole baby bird falls out of a tree um that's scary and it feels alone and it feels like a daunting um experience it feels like the death of the baby bird but there's always hope um, and even if there is no hope, there's always the comfort of the nest, the light of source that remains with the baby bird. Um, so should the baby bird focus on what hurts the most or focus on asking the light to guide the baby bird through this experience? The lesson is there for you. And what do you think that baby bird is going to learn um, through experiencing the light of source, guiding it into the next direction? Whether that is into the mouth of the wolf or into um, learning how to fly. Both directions are good. <laughs> One of them is a little scarier to think about than the other, right? Life doesn't always go the way that you want it, but everything is always in the right place at the right time. This is really helping. There's kind of a weird, gross, groggy, like a uh, smoky, slimy kind of shell, but it's squishy and I'm kind of pulling it out. Um, and it's just been kind of coated, you've been kind of coated by it. So I'm just pulling that out. you're feeling a, a lot brighter like I feel more relaxed I feel more comfortable I feel like um, a broader understanding even if I don't have all the answers right now or if it's not the way I want it to be right now it doesn't have to be that way um, because I, I re I'm reminded that I have the light within myself all the time. And just that reminder is already transmuting a lot of this um, goo that got in here, okay? And I do want to go take a look at your crown and your third eye and your throat chakra. It's always fun to just see what they look like as they are and just mend them um, and help to kind of rebalance all your chakra um, energy flows. I'm called to kind of go into all the energies at once and this is what it looks like and work through it like this. But bringing those two paths, it's like, the, what it felt like to me is, okay, well, we got this path, and then we got this path, and I need you to look at this path, and I need you to look at this path, and I need you to tell me which path you want to take, only for us to realize that they're always connected. They're not really separated. The difficult path is always connected with the path of light because it can't not be. <laughs> it always is a part of source, okay? And source is all. And it is full of light and understanding and higher wisdom and all of time and space, etc. Like it is all, okay? Um, so they're merged. And as they and and with them being merged, it's transmuting a lot of the discomfort, okay, of the path itself. And helping you to remember your stance and your balance comes from the light.
still a lot of sticky stuff, but I feel in your heart getting bright. I, I feel your heart beating. I don't feel like there's a worm in it anymore. It's starting to turn into a, a very glorious apple like in its own right because it's starting to glow and it's starting to feel better inside of itself. And as it glows bright, it's flushing out some of this black that got caked into your, like, I mean, your legs, your feet. Um, so that means your root chakra has got some imbalances. Um, we need to collect you. That could be also a root chakra thing. Um, but we're kind of clearing it out of the face and the head and all that, the neck. Um, we're just, it's just like a gooey, sticky, black tar-like substance. Even as like really thick smoke um, as well that turns sticky. So we're just clearing all that out and your heart now is glowing bright and is able to do it, flush it out all by itself. That tells me that you can be quite self-sufficient. <sighs> because you're doing this all by yourself here. Your heart needed just, a, it just needed to be introduced to the light again. And now it's like, it's starting to get back on track. Like it remembers how to do this thing again. Okay, breathing, breathing. This is just, this is breathing for all your chakras at the same time, front and back, above, below, in all sacred directions, within, outside of, just breathing, just breathing, 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 opening up, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, light. It feels good, it feels good. There's a lot more um, movement, okay? There's a lot more, uh, like, um, I can, like, oxygen. There's a lot more, um, there's light. There's more light getting into all of you again, okay? And so you're just starting to fill with light again. All right, let's take a look. It's like, okay, which one do you want to start with? Because it seems like you want to do third eye or crown chakra. So I'm just going to, which one do you want to start with? All right, I'm going to go into your crown chakra. Yeah, okay, so that's that makes sense. It's like, okay, well, third eye, but then it's like, I don't know, something about crown. It's because they're, they have an interconnected relationship. So when I go to your crown chakra, it looks very flat and gritty, and then I see your third eye inside of your crown chakra. So I need to kind of bring them into balance with each other. And you're really resistant of doing that. It's okay because you're not really resistant. But the energies that have grown used to this balance is resistant. And that energy is also a part of yourself. So. <laughs> Throat is also involved here. I'm going to remind what your crown chakra, what a crown chakra looks like. And I have you and we're going to look at this, these images. It's basically, let's, let's go through a reel of different crown chakras I've seen before. Um, but really, a crown chakra vibrationally, it can be any color, really. Like, it, it's all about the, the, the feeling of that infinite space of light and love and vibrancy, um, creativity, source, heart, um, beats within the crown chakra as it um, fills you with um, access to higher dimensional perspectives and awareness that can be um, transmuted into the third eye where the third eye can now get to enjoy looking at all this content, all this interesting stuff and decide um, what it means to the third eye as it's saying to throw, what do you think, you know, what does this mean to you and your connection with yourself? Like your heart, like, um, do you like this? Does this make you feel um, full of love and light inside your heart? Emotions, does this make you feel sad? Do we need to release something from the emotions? Sacral chakra, like, like it's, all, it's all like third eye now can present it to all the other chakras. Like, so this is the flow, right? 
So we're we're kind of um, I'm showing your crown chakra this, but now I'm starting to show your third eye this, but now I'm showing all the other chakras this. This is how we work together again. This is how we bring it all into balance. This is how we get in the flow with the light again. Seems to be easier to work with the upper chakras, so that means the lower chakras need to, um, to be looked at because <laughs> they're the most quiet of the bunch. This is creating um, a lot of weights because your third eye is coming back down. I don't know what pushed it out, but there's a lot to digest um, in your mind and a lot that needs to get transmuted because it's almost like the closet became so full that the third eye ha had nowhere else to fit in there. So I had to bounce into crown chakra. Um, so it was like a mind overload, okay? Um, so now the third eye is coming back in. Um, to its home and we're going to start to transmute all of this energy okay so it can feel open and clear and free to breathe and inhale and exhale okay man I feel so top heavy right now I feel like my head is like like way too top heavy way too top heavy oh it's freaking crazy feeling There is so much energy to transmute here. It's just unbelievable. My gosh, it's crazy. Oh, gosh. So heavy. I mean, it is so heavy. It's like stacking a pyramid of, of gold on top of your head that... It's just like nobody can carry all that weight on their head without their freaking head not being able to just like it would take a lot of neck strength. <sighs> well, I'm just going to circulate it, circulate it, circulate, circulate. <sighs> Let's see where throat is, okay? Because we're going to have this has to come down. This has to come out like it's transmuting, but just so freaking heavy. It's got to come out. How you doing, throat? What do you think about crown and third eye right now? What do you think about all this heavy weight? What do you got to talk to me about? Are you oinking like a pig? <laughs> See what throat says. This is a little disturbing, okay? But um, your throat's showing me a, an innocent girl and... Her lips are kind of sewn shut, but the scissors came to kind of open them up a little bit, but the pain and the memory still remains, okay? And it's kind of hard to look at because it's just anybody with their lips sewn shut is freaking disturbing, you know? That's very disturbing to look at. Even if the, um, the stitches are cut so you can move your mouth and the stitches are still there, it's just disturbing. And so much, it feels like Ariel who gave her voice away. And um, so it's like the, this innocent face is trying to say something, but nothing comes out. Even with the, the ability to say something, it just, it's like the voice was turned off. I'm going to just create vibration. So I'm just going to be your voice and we're just going to do like uh, oh, e, I, e, e, o, u, e, u, a, a, chang, chang, wa, wa, bing, bang. <laughs> like we got to do something here. Like we got to say something. We just create vibration, okay? Just create vibration in there. <sighs> I love me. I love me. I, my throat chakra is open. Vibration exists in my throat. I have a beautiful voice. I express myself. I, 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 I. I'm going to bring some gongs in, some singing bowls. Some tuning forks. <sighs> I 
All right, we're gonna keep that vibration going in here. And I'm gonna go into your heart. We're just gonna move down the ladder, okay? Heart, how's it going? Oh boy. Heart's doing good, but it's kind of like a, an overload, like of shift. So it's it kind of looks like a heart in a bag of waters or something. Um, and the water is literally in a bag that's constantly like kind of moving all over the place. Um, and we need to break the bag of waters and let the water flow out. Is that like a, a divine feminine? Is that like a, a reflection of the the um, uterus or the, the birthing process, you know, is that like a sacral chakra thing? Um, and the water is cold. So again, I just snap my fingers and I align the path of light, the invisible light, like path that is full of light and love. And I'm just aligning it with what is the problem. Okay, I'm lining it with the, the, what is the problem? In this case, it is the cold bag of waters that is sort of the heart is inside of it. And the waters will not break and the heart cannot be set free. It cannot be birthed out of this. So um, is that the truth? Is it really that bad? Um, or do we need to bring the overlay of source energy over top this again and merge now the two together? Again, that that um, pain and suffering is you. You're putting yourself into a place of pain and suffering. And why are you? Why are you doing that, though? It's like witnessing event that was not right, okay? Um, so we could attach to what isn't right. Or we could simply say everything was right about that event. Will we hate ourselves for saying everything was right about that terrible event? Or will we hate ourselves for saying that, therefore we will agree that nothing was right about that event? So what side of the of the divine light are we going to work with, the illusion or the truth? And you have to work with the truth. So we you could say everything that happened in that family trauma was was correct, was good, was divine. That baby um, bird that fell out of the tree, um, whether it got eaten by a wolf or it learned how to fly, it was divine. So all the terrible things that are happening on this earth are divine events. Even if they're hard to make sense of, even if it's not right or it's not fair, we're going on the path of illusion because everything is right. Somehow, some way, it is all a part of source and it is all in the divine light. And that is the truth. So you have to give yourself permission to see things for the true way that they actually are. And not get stuck into saying it was bad because it was bad. <laughs> because beneath the surface of that is the truth. That everything is balanced. Everything happens for all the right reasons. It's hard to come to that epiphany though. Easier said than done. But you should welcome that epiphany to be reborn inside yourself. It's getting colder, like I'm going to go into your emotional gut now. Solar plexus chakra. It's like um, cold water. This is making my third eye, um, it's giving me a bit of a headache.
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place warmth. It's like cold feet next to a nice toasty warm fire, okay? We're going to create warmth. Warmth. Warmth has always been here. Warmth has never gone away. Warmth will always be here. Love and light and warmth. I start to see all the chakras, the eyes within all the chakras looking at the warmth and the light in your emotional gut. And they're starting to remember through seeing this balance. Ah. Uh. All right, let's take a look at your sacral chakra. Yes, it's very hard to go to the lower chakras. Like, it's almost like I can't reach your sacral chakra. It's like I just can't swim down there. But I'm going to continue to remind sacral chakra of the warmth. And I'm giving sacral chakra eyes to see the beautiful firelight, the warm, um, the warmth of the fire and the, the cold toes that are rejuvenating and healing. And I'm going to place an, an image of the same, similar kind for sacral chakra so it can feel like it is warm. It can feel nurtured and can feel cared for. I start to see a child that... Um, is being tucked in by parents that are taking the time to read a story, to talk before bed, um, to get the blankets just right and all the stuffed animals tucked in just right, um, and to make it a very warm experience. A very, a very loved child that is loved by both parents equally who take the time to make this child feel truly nurtured. And I feel the warmth of this child all tucked in and snuggled into bed and the beautiful dreams this child will have at night. This is the image that I'm sharing with Sacral Chakra. Okay, we're going to go into root here. By the way, the weight here on top of your head is significantly reduced. So let's go to root. That's <sighs> like, where is your root chakra? Like, I'm here, but it's almost like in every direction I look, it's like your root is projected far away from me. But I'm saying I'm in your root chakra right now. You are right here, right now, and you are not anywhere but right here, right now. So I'm telling you that you are right here, right now. And you are going to say to yourself, I am right here, right now. I am in my body. I am in this beautiful world. I am experiencing the light of source flowing through me. I am I feel my feet that are warmed by the fire. I feel my inner child tucked in um, with love at night and sleeping um, in a very comfortable, warm environment with beautiful dreams. Um, I feel that I am here, right, right here, right now. Your root chakra needs to feel right here, right now. Otherwise, you're always going to feel scattered and not really know where you are anymore, okay? This is a very vulnerable space. I feel like there's a man here and he's very heavy on his feet. So he's quite, he's quite a heavy set man. 
He just feels very heavy on his feet. And I don't um, particularly like his energy. And I want to know why he's here. And I tell him you don't belong here and you know it. It just seems like he can go wherever he wants. It doesn't matter if it helps you feel balanced or not. But he is also emanating a very cold energy. So what I do is I create the same images here, like uh, the cold toes by a warm fire and the child getting tucked in with love at night and the path of source blending with the path of illusions and how it's transmuting and becoming full of light. And I place this into an orb um, of truth, divine truth and wisdom, enlightenment and healing. And I place this orb into this man, this being's crown chakra, into his third eye chakra, into his throat chakra, into his heart, into his solar plexus, into his sacral chakra, into his root chakra. And I expand this energy above and below and front and back within and all sacred directions. And I help this energy to disperse throughout his being. His energy gives off the encouragement for you to feel like you don't know where you are or who you are or what to do anymore. He um, it's kind of emanates that type of energy. And I'm still having him um, experience balance and harmony inside of himself. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put him in a box now and I'm going to separate him from you. Because this is going to this is not um going to help at all for him to be there. And I coat this box in gold and platinum. But I fill the box with light and love and nourishment of source and I remind him that the light and the love is inside of himself. Let's see what your root is like now. <sighs> it's just a little baby boy. And he's lost his way. And it's too dark and scary in here. And I have this baby boy look in the mirror. Because again, there's something imbalanced about his energy and what he's saying. There's something um, lacking here. And I'm going to bring all the light and all the love from all your chakras and we're going to um, connect that energy with your root because your root chakra has got to be rehabilitated and it's got to start inhaling and exhaling light so you can feel that I am right here right now. I am present within myself. The light is within me. The light is circulating around me. The light is guiding me. I'm just going to see Archangel Raphael in your root chakra, okay? 
continuing to shine light and healing energy and vitality and laughter and dance and singing here and vibrations of sound to rehabilitate your root chakra so you'll feel more collected you'll feel warmer on the inside you'll feel like you're glowing from the inside again but i'm going to place archangel raphael in your sacral chakra um, for the same purpose okay and in your solar plexus chakra Ra archangel raphael is in your heart archangel raphael is in your throat chakra archangel raphael is in your third eye archangel raphael is in your crown chakra to laugh and to dance and to sing and to be playful and to ignite your inner child and to ignite the love within yourself, the ability to forgive anything, ability to understand and to see the, that everything's purpose is circulating in the light and love of source energy. And that is outside of you and it is inside of you and you are in oneness with this truth. Mm. All right, that is what I can share with you today. Thank you so much for this experience. Thank you for um, your vulnerability sharing here on YouTube. A lot of people can heal from your session as well um, and receive guidance um, to help them in their own life. So we're kind of all working together here. Um, there's a lot of energy work. Um, this could be emotional, um, but it is to kind of create a reset button for you to return to um, the true light inside yourself and to feel that flowing through you and guiding you and warming you from the inside there's a lot to work with here um, so just like take your time with it okay take it easy um, just feel what you need to feel um, but continue to speak positively continue to open up to the light continue to experience the light inside yourself growing brighter um, feel it, experience it, um, be one with it, you know, um, state that my chakras are open, my, my go through them, like my root chakra is open, my sacral chakra is open, you know, go through, just, just take five minutes and just state that, just state it, okay, um, state, I am right here, I am right now, you know, I am right here, I am right now, um, I am fully in my body. Um, I feel the light and love of source within myself. Um, because this can activate that truth for you too. And it can help. It seems to me like with this trauma, you may, um, it may have been a ripple effect that took you, the baby bird, out of the tree. But everything happens for all the right reasons. So even when bad things happen, they're good, actually good things. So you're going to have to shift your perspective and your attachment to uh, maybe the trauma side. Um, I know this, it's always easier said than done. But again, that's just some more um, tips, things to think about and, and give it a try, you know. Um, try some light language. Um, try to dance, like put some music on and just dance with the music. Um, maybe cook and ha make yourself a nice warm soup, you know. <laughs> There's something about warm things here that um, is also kind of a, a theme in your session. Um, all right. Thank you so much again. And uh, for those watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Um, I also have two other YouTube channels, so you can check me out at Abby Normal and Zodiac Energy Readings. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right. Have a great day, everybody.